it's free. And we were walking in, uh, we were sitting by the sea otters and the seals. And it's the end of the day. And the education, the education person came up and she did something with her hand and the sea otter, the sea otter, the seal, whoever she was, she followed her hand. And we walk through the tunnel and over it, you walk underneath where the animals are. And I said to her, what did you just do? And she's like, watch. And she took her hand and ran it on the glass and the sea otter followed it and played. And then the sea otter said to the, she motioned to the human, she went like this. So the human would do it again. Mm -hmm. And so the human woman kept doing this and the sea otter was like going back and forth and swimming all around. And then she let us try. And we're like, you know, there's a family there and they were like, what's happening? And she said, they use it for training, but she's not getting treats. She's just doing this because she likes to play. It was seriously one of the best moments of my life to see a sea otter who knew exactly what she was doing, yeah. training yeah. the humans. And she yeah. was beautiful. It was, I should write about that. I should write about that. I'm yes. doing that right and now. How like powerful is that today when we're talking about stop waiting, start living, having more fun in your life, adventure in your life, play in your life. That couldn't have been a better story, Pam. Come on now. Well, I mean, it's legit. That was awesome. Thank you so much for stepping up. Deborah, get your butt up here, girl, and uh, tell us who you are, where you're coming from, and a fun fact, what you do also. Oh, hello. I'm delighted to be here. Nice energy in the room. Oh, you got it, girl. There's always good energy yes. if I'm in a room. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> so I'm Deb D, and I actually have two amazing hats. They have different colors, different worlds. And today I'm coming at you from the island of Tobago. I live in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. I was up in Brooklyn. And then during the early stages of the pandemic, I was like, I think I'm going to swap Brooklyn for the beach. <laughs> so, I have done. Yes. <laughs> so two hats that I wear is I work for an organization called Fearless Communicators based in New York City. And we're public speaking and storytelling coaches. So we're working with people in business helping them to craft the stories that actually move the needle forward, engage mm. their clients, et cetera, et cetera. Anywhere from I need a new pitch all the way to I'm the keynote at a major conference yeah. and all of the beautiful places in between. When I'm not working with fearless communicators, I am a magic weaver and I'm the founder of my own business called Big Life Magic. And what I help people to do is to tap into their own magic so they can move from magic curious to magic attuned. And you get to define what your magic is. It might be your intuition, it might be angels, it can be whatever it is. And the core of my work and also, Pam, what I have written a book about, I would like to speak to you about writing, is um, the transformation from big life loss to big life magic. So I am also a grief guide, supporting people through um, their grief journey. The fun fact that I want to share is, it's got the animal theme going on here. Here on the island of Tobago, it is the season where the leatherback mother turtles come up to the beach to lay oh, yeah. their eggs. So on Tuesday night, my husband and I went down to a beach, literally called Turtle Beach, to see three amazingly beautiful like large, large, large mother turtles come up onto the beach to lay their eggs. I mean, you can only see so much because you can't actually use lights because it disturbs yeah. the turtles, but breathtaking and amazing fact, the mother turtles will instinctively and always return to the beach where they were born. Mm -hmm. The beach where they were born is the beach that they come back to to lay all of their eggs for their whole life. And I just think they're amazing. They're like, when I was kind of looking at one and you look into their face, they're kind of, they look like gentle dinosaurs. Something yeah. Like the, the wisdom in the mm -hmm. is amazing. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Just, just witnessing the circle of life, right? Happening right there in front of your eyes. How amazing that is. Yeah. That's super awesome. Yeah. Thanks for being here, Deborah D. We yeah. like you, girl. We like you.
For sure. We hope you come back again. Miss Jackie Z, get your booty up here, girl. Oh, I was afraid you'd call on me. Oh, After yeah. those two, what am I supposed to say? Oh, you're supposed oh, to give say me a who break. you are, where you're coming from. <laughs> Fun fact, what you Fun do. Fun fact. You well, be you, okay. Jackie. That's what this is all about. You do Well, I know, well. but I'm trying to think of something something ingenious that's fun no, and it's don't. animal just and everything be, else the best be, i can yeah. do is this animal's asleep on the floor <laughs> so any well i usually say i'm probably well some of you know me um a couple of you know that i'm jackie zicoli that's broccoli with the z and if you don't like broccoli wing it <laughs> um because i am here and that's what i do and at least you remember broccoli whether it's good bad or indifferent um, and um, when you think of LinkedIn, think of me. That's another thing I want you to remember because I bring in clarity and simplicity your alliances with a large area of influence to actually engage with you to make you word of mouth. It's mm. that simple. Yeah. Fun fact. Well, the best I can do, I just got off of a meeting and we are determined we're going to make a t-shirt of this saying, which may enlighten you because I love it. And it just came out of her mouth without even thinking. And because she's so funny and she said, I'm not arguing. I'm just explaining why I'm right. <laughs> I love that. That's so perfect. Yes. We should Isn't that good? Isn't that right? good? Yeah. And, and she told me, and this other makes sense too. She says, I kind of feel like I'm a butterfly in a cocoon with one wing out. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, Ginger, you are so right. How many times do we feel like we got just, we got, we got the one wing out. We haven't really gotten our full bloom yet. We're just kind of pedaling over here. Checking it out. I got it. I love that. Yeah. So great. So I that's the closest that. I can come to an animal. Okay. That's nice. And you guys don't have to keep it about animals. It's fine. It's well, well it was think. a nice trend. Oh, it was fine. good. It's it was fine. good, Pam. That was a it's great fine. start. And even you didn't know it. It was it was our exquisite and amazing Colleen that brought it out right. of something as now Cause beautiful because we, we know how much colleen <clears throat> loves animals yeah totally we know that for sure <laughs> i don't have any at my house thank you jackie you got, got your husband right right he's not an animal well oh, he's oh well he's better. not a vegetable I can't either out loud you guys i just decided yeah. to go live all right yeah. jerry jerry <laughs> yeah. everyone's like uh does colleen know how to pronounce your name because she pronounces it wrong and jerry's like i know but i just let her do it it's fine <laughs> Sure, everybody else does. What's the difference, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I love you. It doesn't matter what you say, how what you how you pronounce my name. <laughs> Jerry just relocated over the weekend to Florida. Can you believe that? Oh, oh, That's wow. why I look like a brown berry right now. I've already been to the beach for two days in a row. I'm like, I'm not coming here and I'm going to the beach day one. Like beautiful. Oh, it's yeah, it's going to be a fun, fun, new adventure of my life. So what's a fun fact? Um, I have two beautiful grandchildren, and one of them is a five-year-old grandson, and one of them is a two-year-old granddaughter. And so this is funny, maybe, to you. It was hilarious to me. So she was digging in my purse, two years old, digging in my purse yesterday. And, of course, I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's she going to find? So she pulls out chapstick. <laughs> Chat, Burt's Bees chapstick, and then she pulls out this little oil roller, you know, doTERRA or one of those. They have the oil rollers, and you just have, you know, the little perfume, like maybe myrrh or frankincense yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. she yeah. says, Gigi, is this for your butt? <laughs> and I'm like, what? And she said, If I have stress in my butt, yeah. <laughs> So her mom uses this little roller on her little oh. owies if there's yeah. something, you know, diaper rash. That's great. Oh. Like, is this for your butt? That's so cute. Well, Jerry, tell everybody what you do because you're fabulous. I'm working okay. with you, so um, please share. Okay. So I am the financial specialist. And what I do is I teach you zero loss strategy which is huge in today's market. 
anybody has a lot of loss going on or some loss going on, oh, thinking, what in the heck is going on? I'm going to teach you all about what you need to know and then show you what to invest in so that you can shore up or stop the bleeding <laughs> and protect your money from taxes and your life with living benefits. Very, very big deal. So I do that with Wine, Women & Wealth events and those are networking events that are so much fun so much and a lot of drill down into the truth about finances. I break the box open. This is not a financial advisor that's going to treat you like a number. I actually teach you and then you are empowered to ask the right questions. And if you don't use me as your financial specialist, okay, fine. Use someone else. But guess what? If you come to the class, you're going to know what the hell to ask yeah. the other guy, right? Yeah. That's what's important. So yeah. it's all about empowering the women to make good decisions. There's one <laughs> small caveat that Jerry didn't mention which was her and I had happy hour planned on Tuesday <laughs> night so that I could have happy hour with her before she moved to Florida. I was texting her, texting her, calling her, not hearing back. And I'm like, I bet she moved. She finally <laughs> calls me back when I'm driving and I had to go to, I was going to meet her at happy hour in like 20 minutes. And she goes, I moved to Florida. I'm like, I knew it. You did it <laughs> right before we were supposed to meet. I was like, dang it. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. I forgave you. I forgave you because we just went ahead and had our own happy hour online that night on Zoom. It worked out. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I love you, honey. I love you. I love it you was too, just Jerry. perfect timing. I said, <laughs> that's it. I'm out. <laughs> All right, Renee, where have you been, girl? I swear you have fallen off the face of the earth lately. What is up with you? I love that top. Thank you. So wonderful to see you. And I got your message that you invited me. I'm like, I want to go. I haven't yes. seen you. It's been a hot minute since we've connected. For so 20,000 hot yeah, minutes. Right, right. So I'm like, I'm going. I had two Zoom calls, one in Alberta, Canada, and then one in Kenya. And nice. now I, I can hers is right after these. I can go, I'm going. So I signed up and here I am. I'm like, oh. So yeah, I, I love you. I appreciate you. I have not fallen off the face. There's, I'm very, very active on social media. Oh, I know you are. I see I you am, around. I am all over on social media. If you see, if I've got my own Facebook group, I've got 760 people. Um, there are other, yeah, it's going really well. I've got my book that's out there. It's doing really well. It's a, a four times, at least four times. Love number it. One. Finding your voice, unlock your chains, unleash your greatness. If you haven't gotten your copy, I encourage you to do so. If you like Put the link in the one, chat, girl. Put the yeah. link in the chat. If you want your own autograph one, we can arrange that as well. I will put that. Tell in. everybody um, who you are and what you do and where you're coming from real quick, Renee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I am Renee Reich. I am a transformational and women's mindset mentor. I say mentor versus a coach because a coach is like, add a girl, add a girl. And I'm like guiding so that's why I say mentor rather than I'm going to, I'm going to give you the, the cheerleading too, but it's really guiding you to finding your voice and everything I do is about the voice. So I take women from vulnerability to empowerment. So the V is vulnerability, owning your voice, igniting that flame and inspiration. C is courage and confidence and E is empowerment. Nice. So I lead you on the journey of finding your own voice. And it doesn't mean you have to have lost. I actually physically lost mine was told I may never be able to speak again. As Colleen knows the story. Mm -hmm. Um, I was quarantined for four months. It took close to one year with the help of a vocal coach to fully get it back. But that was the outer voice. It was the inner voice that took away the outer voice, limiting beliefs, all of those things, the, the fear of judgment, not feeling ever enough. And that is what took place and took hold of my own throat. And I was quarantined because I wasn't able to be with the public because I was so contagious at the time. Fast forward, I'm here now. I've got the number one best-selling book and I've created this course that I lead women on that journey. I come from corporate America, where is where it took place and losing my voice because I never spoke up. And I realized, as we all know, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. It was in business and in life, I did freaking use my voice. I was that people please, I want you to like me and that meant a form of love. So if I say anything, then I'll lose that. And I didn't want to lose that. So I held on to it so tight that my voice was taken away mm -hmm. for me, not from me. Right. So now oh, I have women totally. in front of their own. I'm so glad you're back here with us. And ladies, if you have anything that you want to put in the chat, please feel free to do so. This is about your time to not only be educated by our member and host, Julie Jones. We've provided this platform for our members to come and teach. 
Oh my gosh, we have so many amazing weeks on Thursdays lined up for you guys and teachers and hosts for you guys to learn everything from your personal life to your business life. Please drop all of your information and connect with each other. Stay connected. This is your opportunity to, like Jackie said, build alliances, get to know each other, find another business bestie and a friend that you can network with. Um, and I'm excited to have Julie here with us today. Julie is uh, one of uh, my best friends. Uh, and the reason why I love Julie is I went to a networking event on a Sunday. Anyone that knows me, Colleen does not network on Sunday. She doesn't do anything on Sunday. She unplugs on Sunday, locks it down with her husband uh, because that's how I rest, renew, rejuvenate. And I went to this networking event a couple of years ago and uh, there's Julie Jones, you know, standing there in the middle of the room and uh, Julie's like six foot tall. So I'm five one. Right. So Julie just, Pat, you know, is so tall and uh, we didn't get a chance to talk to each other, but they had gift bags and she had put something in the gift bag. I had put a magazine in the gift bag. So I followed up with everyone that I got information from and I followed up with Julie and before pre COVID, we met at a pizza place. I walked in, gave her a big hug. We sat down. She starts telling me that she's this badass cop and SWAT team member. And I'm like, girl. There's something about you I just love, right? And I was talking about my business and lead up for women and what I had going on. I was like, I have an event next weekend. She's like, next weekend, she pulls out her phone. I think I'm free. I was like, what? She goes, yeah, send me the link. I'll sign up and come. She just walks in, you know, for a full weekend of like a retreat that I had scheduled, you know? We got to know each other. From that point forward, she's been a uh, presenter at every one of my retreats. Since then, uh, she's absolutely phenomenal. I hang around Julie because she has unlimited energy. I know I have a lot of energy, but she has unlimited energy and she's taught me how to live. And I don't think that we take that seriously. She's taught me how to live. I was busy, 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 work, work, work. And she's taught me how to have fun. I mean, I videos I see of her running down the street in a blow up dinosaur outfit with her dogs. Like that's a normal day to Julie. So I'm, I'm saying that with uh, everything in my heart to introduce her to say, she's why I have fun. She's why I stop and live my life um, because I don't want to die not having of lived, right? I take adventures, a lot of them with Julie. Uh, because she just brings that out in me. So Julie, this is all about you, girlfriend. I'm just going to hand this over and remove my pin and you get to take it from here. So go for it. Thanks. Listen, like, look at Bestie where we're both wearing the animal print. That's why we've got the whole animal energy going on, right? Because, you know, we're, we're, se we're secret like cougars. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, since you talked about the fun, all right, so let's just get started with the fun right off the bat, you know, because if you're not living, you know, and having some fun and like if you don't have a pair of like googly eye glasses or some type of glasses, you need to get yourself a pair and they're super cheap on Amazon. So like at some point, just go and get yourself one because if you want to really stand out and make people smile and make people laugh and show people that you're really living out, you know, I say blowing up the box. I don't even say you know, um, thinking outside the box. Cause I just say F the box, right? Like, you know, we die in a box. So like, you know, like, like uh. let's really totally blow up the, you know, the whole damn box. So who the hell am I? And why the hell do you want to listen to me today? I don't know. Like, cause I never know what's going to come out of my mouth, but let me tell you just a little personal story as to why, what I'm going to talk about is so, um, passionate to me. In fact, just like you, Renee, I, um, along with Colleen, she was one of my co-collaborators. I just released an international bestseller in November called Stop Waiting, Start Living. And it's really, yeah, I have it. I, I've, I've gotten better. Like I have it right here. I have it right here. And if you two want an autographed copy, I can get you one, right? And it's more than just a book. It is a journal because I am so passionate about people taking inspired action in their life. So you read a chapter and then you, you know, you journal on on the questions that the different authors ask you. And, you know, recently somebody just came to me and told me that they started their baking business, like a long, you know, long time dream they started and they just got out there based on reading the book. So again, just a little story about me and why I'm so passionate about this. 
As Colleen mentioned, I am a former police officer and SWAT team member. And so I saw how quickly life can change. You know, here today, gone tomorrow, everybody, everybody thinks they have all these tomorrows and you don't know when the expiration date is on the back of your head. Why I believe it's on the back of your head, I don't know, but that's just where it is in my world, okay? <laughs> that's my world, Julie's world. But here's the more personal story. At um, 18 years ago, it's hard to believe that it's been 18 years, um, at the age of 59, my mom passed away from early onset Alzheimer's. You know, her and my father thought they had this entire retirement plan laid out for them. And they had all these ideas, these plans, these thoughts of like how their life was gonna look. And because of my mom's age, and there was no history of Alzheimer's in her family, the doctors misdiagnosed her and they were blaming everything on menopause, go figure. Her, all her memory loss was based on, on menopause. So when we finally got the diagnosis, the true diagnosis, what ended up happening was that it was a little too late for like any medications to be effective. And I have to tell you, the most heartbreaking thing I had to do was tell my mom that she had the, that she had the disease. And I remember her words to me, am I going to die? Well, mom, you know, we're all going to die, you know, at some point, but like, how can we give to that, that quality of life and all their travel plans and all that they wanted to do all went out the window because then my mom became fearful of traveling. Like, you know, they dream trips that they had planned, they had to put on the side. Right. And so based on that, and then, you know, my dad just passed away three years ago. Um, again, from undiagnosed pancreatic cancer, like there's like a kind of like a thread in my family of undiag um, undiagnosed things. Like I almost died as well um, back in 2007 from um, a ruptured um, appendix that they missed. And I ended up in, you know, emergency surgery. So again, like all these things that, you know, they happen, right? Like all of us have had experiences of that. And yet sometimes we forget about just being in this moment, because that's all we have. And, you know, Jerry, I am so excited that you said yes to the opportunity of moving. Like, I love the fact that, you know, Deborah, you took the time to go see the turtles, right? Because it's like, what are we not saying yes to? There are so many opportunities that come our way and we're afraid for whatever reason to say yes. And what is one of those things? It's that we're woo busy, right? We are so damn busy with our to-do list that we forget about living. And I mean, how many people on the call believe that there's such a thing as balance? Hmm. <laughs> mm, okay, well, you know, like that's like, you know, I'm here to tell you, like, I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> There is no such thing as balance. However, there are things that you can do, steps that you can take in your life to create a life by design rather than default. See, I take people from this woo busy idea and really let's get shit done. That's my coaching platform. Like let's get shit done. Like how do you want to live your life? Because if you're not doing more of the things that you want to do, and that you get to do, and you have this whole list of have tos, that's the number one problem. Because life is about what do we get to do? And I know I've all, we've all been there, right? Like I don't, I'm not like speaking from like that this has never happened to me. See, like my whole like mantra in life is, has been up to this point, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. And then, you know, like life is just passing you by. So if you want to get to be a really great expert in an, an area that you may kind of like be struggling in, become a teacher of it and start to apply it in your life. Because when I speak to all of you today, it's just a reminder to me of the things that I could be implementing. I'm not a shoulder. I don't tell people you should do anything, right? Because I'm going to give you some fast and furious tips today, some things like to really consider and think about. And sometimes, how many people does this happen to, right? Like you go to a seminar, you get all excited, 
oh my God, like I'm implementing all 25 things in the next week into my business and into my life, right? And then we get overwhelmed and nothing, nothing gets implemented and we forget all about it until we hear about it again. So whatever I share with you today, take the one thing, the one thing that really resonates with you and make it a habit. Anybody ever read the book Atomic Habits by James Clear? Some of us are in a book club and it's, it's excellent. But like before I even read this, I'm like, James must have been like listening to my thoughts because like he wrote about it and I always talk about it, right? Is that it's incremental change. It's small changes. It's creating systems. Because again, like how many times do we decide that maybe we want to release a few pounds and all of a sudden what ends up happening? We decide we're going to eliminate sugar, eliminate alcohol. We're going to eat super clean. We're going to exercise five times a day, right? And how long do you do that for? Maybe two days, right? And then it just becomes overwhelming and you stop doing it all together. So that's like my first tip is like any time or anywhere that you want to implement something, like do it small increments because here's where your brilliance will shine through. Your brilliance will shine through in the times that you are just doing nothing, that you are just yeah. being, right? Like we don't give ourselves sometimes enough quiet time, enough time just to be, okay? We are human beings, not human doings. And sometimes we're so wrapped up on that hamster wheel of everything that we're doing that we forget to just enjoy. Let me ask you this, what if today, what if today was truly your last day on this earth? Like, would you be happy with everything that you were currently doing right now? Like, are you enjoying this day? Are you enjoying this presentation? Or are you thinking about the million other things that you have to do? Oh my gosh, like as soon as I get off this call, I've got to do, you know, X, Y, and Z. Instead of just being present and saying, oh my gosh, that's Julie Jones, she's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, it's like, that's what I want for you. And that's what I want for people overall is just stop doing so much. I always like, like to bring up this example. Anybody ever been in the shower and like all these amazing creative ideas come to you? Anybody else has that happened to? Like I get, I jump out of the shower. I'm like, holy cow, before I forget it, cause I'm getting older, right? I'm like, I got to write this all down right? Because these are some amazing ideas. But do you know why they come in the shower? It's because we're not thinking about anything. We're in a routine, a, a normal routine. Like we, we all get in the shower probably the same way. We do the same things. We're not thinking about how to shower. And that's why it opens up the brain for all this creativity to come through. Brene Brown talks about it. Creativity is so key but it's gonna come in the moments when we're just doing nothing. And there is nothing wrong with doing nothing. Hey, it's can very I share beautiful. something, Julie? Yes, yes, you can. I wanna bring this up because anyone here watch the show, This Is Us? Yes. Okay, so we're all bawling if you watch it and it's getting toward the end. And uh, I was watching it yesterday. I don't know when it's on, but I stream it and, um, it's about, you know, she has dementia and she's at the last part of her life. And my husband said that has to be the hardest thing for the person passing away to live in regret of all of the things they never got to do. And I looked at him and I said, there's no way I will die living in regret that I didn't do what it was that I wanted to do. So whatever that looks like for you, my friend, I told my husband, we need to be doing that now. So if you're not doing those things, you need to let me know what those are, because I never will live my life in regret. I have not always been that way. Julie's been a big person that's helped me move in this direction, but never, ever think, oh my gosh, I'm going to die in regret 
plan it, do it, get it on your calendar, live the life you desire to live because this is it. This is the life. This is the one you get girlfriend. So I just want to share that because that was a moment where my husband was like, that has to be the hardest thing. And I'm like, that means you're thinking that you're going to die with regrets. No, 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 no. We're not dying with regrets. So what do we need to do to make sure that we can check off that bucket list? <laughs> well, absolutely. And you know, these, these thoughts that come to our head, they just don't, you know, like they just don't appear for no reason. I call them sometimes impromptus. Have you ever thought of somebody like all of a sudden, like somebody comes to mind and then maybe you get a phone call from them, but you know, sometimes what else happens is I think of somebody and I don't act upon it right away. And then they're no longer there to have a conversation with, right? Like that has happened numerous times in my life. I think of somebody and all of a sudden, I like I see on Facebook that they passed away or I, I find out something happened or, you know, and of course, like I can just talk to them out loud, but it's not the same, right? And there's like, I never get off a phone call, including with my girlfriends and not say I love you. Like not say I love you because like, I don't want there to be a moment for anybody in my life to not know exactly how I felt about them. So one of the tips, because I want to get to some like actual meat and potatoes here that I want to really share with you is this idea of, you know, like time increments. I, how many people calendar block, right? Calendar block. Some people time block, right? Colleen's like, you know, everything I've, a lot of what I've learned, I've learned from Colleen. However, one of the things that I learned early on is that, you know, there's this, this myth, I like to call it that you got to work super hard to have like anything that you want, right? And I'm all about how can we make it easy, effortless, effortless, and fun, <laughs> right? Because if we're having fun, that's what attracts people to us. So most of us, including myself, like say you have a big project that you're going to work on, right? You, you block out this huge chunk of time two hours, three hours, four hours, right? You put it in your calendar. You're all excited. You're going to get all this stuff done. And then what happens? Like everything under the sun that could possibly go wrong or possibly interrupt you or possibly distract you happens. And that happens day after day after day after day sometime, right? And then all of a sudden we just don't like, you know, like two weeks have passed is chipping away at our self-esteem because we're like, oh my God, like I keep saying to myself, I'm going to get this done and I don't get it done. So what I like to do is I like to do increments of 15 minutes, 15 minute increments. Now I know you're saying to me, okay, what the hell? This woman's crazy. Like, what can you really get done in 15 minutes? But here's the here. I see you. I see you shaking your head there, Jack. <laughs> you're like, what the hell? But here's the thing. I want you to think of like this overriding like passion goal what is it that you really want to accomplish what do you get to do between now and 2022 i don't want this to be something like returning emails like you know crappy to do stuff like tasky stuff i want this to really speak to your heart like something that is a big project like for me this year i am creating and releasing a television show Okay, so like that's a big passion project of mine, right? So like, but again, like Colleen's my coach and like I'm full transparency. It's been a, lot, a little hard for me to like actually sit down and get this, the, the shit done that I need to get done, right? But you know what's doable? For me, it's sitting these 15 minute increments and you eliminate all distractions. You turn off the phone, you turn off anything that's going to ding at you, like your computer, whatever it looks like. Set an actual timer like don't use your phone timer because then like the phone's going to be on and it's going to be distracting you because you're going to see the flashing of like text messages and emails and whatever else the hell happens right it's just a huge distraction and then make sure you have your water whatever you want to drink because isn't it funny isn't it funny how the subconscious like all of a sudden knows that you're going to do something really important to you and now you got to go to the bathroom. Now you're hungry. Now you got to go clean your refrigerator, right? Because all of a sudden that dirty refrigerator needs to be cleaned right at that given moment. And you're like, WTF, like I, I just, you know, I just want 15 minutes. So I promise you, 
you set the timer and you put your head down and you stay focused for those 15 minutes on that one item that you're working on. Because every time we multitask or we do something else or like you're focused in and then like you, you see that ding or you, you, you answer someone else, it takes the brain on average 10 minutes to come back to your first priority. So 15 minutes, like you will be so surprised at what you can get done in 15 minutes. Timer goes off, here's the key, ladies. You celebrate, woohoo! You do a little dance that you did your 15 minutes, whatever it looks like, right? Because you are celebrating that you showed up for yourself and you took action. You don't qualify, you don't quantify, like, oh my God, you know, like this sucks, whatever. Like if you were a writer, this sucks what I just wrote. No, 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 no. You showed up and took action. Now, if you decide after a little break that you want to do another 15 minutes, well, of course, then go ahead and set it up. Let's say, though, you don't. Like, it's you, all you got is that 15 minutes every day. You want to do this seven days a week. You do this seven days, right? Because, like, even if, like, you have no boundaries on a Sunday, most of us still maybe have a morning routine. I like to do my 15 minutes in the morning, right? You know, like journaling, whatever, you know, like you could just consider this like a journaling exercise, whatever you want to do, but you want to, you know, create a habit with this. So seven days is how much time that's an hour and 45 minutes, right? If you're being consistent. It's so much better that you're actually now you're building your self-worth and your self-esteem because you're getting some stuff done instead of day after day after day. Damn it. I didn't get done what I said I was going to get done. You know, I, I let myself down again. And you know, you know how it goes. Our brain, like we say some of the most God awful stuff to ourselves. Don't even realize sometimes what we're saying to ourselves. You know, like if you want to stop that habit, think about saying what you say to yourself to someone else. Like, you know, pick another woman in this, in this, you know, room and, and think to yourself, okay, like when I keep saying I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I'm dumb, like now turn around and say, you're stupid, you're dumb. You would never talk to somebody else like that. So why do you talk to yourself like that? All right. So 15 minute increments. All right. Maybe that doesn't, that doesn't, you know, like um, appeal to you. Maybe that's not the tip you want to take away from here. So here's number two. Woohoo! I love this one. The art of saying no and no is a complete sentence. And I know as women, we have a lot of issues around that because it's almost to me something like we don't want to see, you know, seem like we're not giving, right? Like, I mean, that's us by, by nature. We're nurturers. You know, like everybody's always demanding something of us. And when you say, this is the key to remember, when you say yes, to the have to's in life, because I'm going to define like the two ways that I want you to say yes. When you say yes to the have to's, you're saying no to another priority in your life. And that's what you really have to look at. Like, what are my priorities? Because every day we're faced with high priority and low priority items. And people with low priority items are destined to work for or always be like subject to those people who have high priorities. That's just the honest, you know, honest to God truth. So when I say yes to life opportunities, how many people have seen the Jim Carrey movie, The Yes Man? Oh my gosh, if you have not seen that, that's your assignment. Like you're gonna just be, and you're gonna have some downtime for yourself. And I want you like in the next week to watch that movie. Cause first of all, it's, it's funny. But here's the thing, like, you know, like sometimes these movies really truly have life lessons. So for 24 hours, all Jim Carrey could do is really say yes to all these amazing life opportunities and all the doors that it opened up. We are so conditioned to say no sometimes just like that to life opportunities. Because what's the word that we heard more than any other word before the age of two? No, right? No, don't touch that. No, you can't do that. No, 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 no. So is it any reason when somebody offers us an opportunity to go see the sea turtles, we're like, no, I don't have time, you know, right? Because like, that's like the first thing that we're conditioned to say 
Whereas like what else is so pressing or so important that you couldn't say yes, be in that moment and have a once in a lifetime experience. See, this is so passionate to me and I just posted about this on LinkedIn today. I don't know, it was about six, seven years ago. I was challenged <laughs> to go to New York in a day. I took my husband to lunch, just lunch. We flew out on a Sunday morning at 6 a.m. and we returned that same night at 9 p.m. We had four hours in New York because of the flights. We went to lunch, we went to the Met Stadium and then they took us to some park, not Central Park, because that was like way across New York. Like we, you know, and we did all of this in four hours. Now it is one of the best memories of my life because I said, yes. Now, sometimes you have to enroll the people that like you wanna take along, right? But when you are clear on what it is you wanna do, let me tell you what happened that day. My husband has a very busy air conditioning and heating business. This was in September. This was at the height of the heat. He works on Sundays. He was ticked off when I said, listen, we're, we're, we're going and doing this. Like, this is a challenge and, you know, we're, we're doing this. And uh, he was not happy at the airport at six o'clock in the morning. And he kept telling me all these people are going to call. Like, I'm going to lose all this business. I can't believe we're doing this. Yada, 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 yada. Well, I'm not going to get into like, I changed his attitude on the plane by some conversation that we had. We flew off that plane. He was more excited than me for our lunch in New York. I mean, he went, he hired a driver just for those four hours so that we would just like not have to worry about catching taxis and all that kind of stuff. Do you know that day, not one call came in for air conditioning services, not one. Because I was very clear that this was going to happen and you will get the support in your life when you get clear on saying the yeses to life opportunities. Because there is only so much time and, you know, again, like I, I go back to my parents, one of their dream places was Greece and they weren't able to go. And like, you know, and I, and unfortunately, like I was planning, I was in plans of taking my dad to Greece to surprise him. And then he got the pancreatic cancer and, and, you know, he passed away. So like those opportunities present themselves to us all the time. So like when you are given a lot of times, like we're asked, okay, do you want to be on a board? Do you want to volunteer? Do you want to do this? And because we don't want to seem like we're not giving, we say yes without really thinking about what we're saying yes to. Ask for 24 hours. Like before you make a decision, if it's, and if it's an immediate no, you know, I'm honored you asked, no, thank you. I mean, that's more than I would even say, but it's like, you know, most times it's like, no, thank you. You know, like you don't have to give an explanation. People hear no all the time. Do you think when you tell the waiter, you know, like he asks you, hey, would you like this great, you know, appetizer and you say no, he doesn't run to the back of the kitchen and start crying because you said no, right? People are not going to respond like that. They understand that you have a lot going on in life. You know, I hear that with kids these days, there's this new thing about like how their parents have to say yes for 24 hours within like, you know, like, you know, there's caveats and stuff like that. I mean, how cool is that? How cool would it be to set something up with like a friend or a spouse or something where everything they ask you to do, it's a yes within reason, you know, as long as it's legal, moral, ethical, like whatever. I hear a challenge coming, Julie. You know? I hear a challenge like, coming. You know? Like whatever your, like whatever your boundaries, you know, like are, right? But just imagine like how many times I, I think, and I know some of my best memories in life are when I said yes to like an impromptu thing, concerts, Things that I had no idea were going to happen. Somebody called me up and I said, yes, why not? Yes, why not? Because you know what? The work and all the have tos are always going to be there. As an entrepreneur, you're never going to be done with everything that you want to do. So stop trying to do everything. Which leads me to my third and final thing. I usually have five, but because I see the time, like I'm very respectful of time. 
because everybody's time is valuable, your most valuable asset. Because but I do think that if everyone drops their emails, you can send them the rest of the tips. So oh, yeah. they've got the rest of them. So drop your sure. email in there and Julie will send you the rest of the tips. That way they get the full everything. They get everything. That's right. Because see, going back to time is our most valuable asset. We can make more money. We can never get back the time. So like really think about like where you are spending your time. So my third and final thing is how many people use a to-do list? Oh, oh, got it. Got a few hands. To-do list, right? To-do list. I don't believe in to-do lists. Woo, just throw them out the window. And I know this is really hard for people and people are like, Again, that crazy Julie Jones. Like, I know, look at the faces. Like, oh my God, what is she talking about getting rid of a to-do list, right? Okay, so here's what a to-do list is. And I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some like love back. So don't like, don't freak out on me. Don't turn off the computer. Like that's it, I'm done with this woman. So a to-do list is a disorganized directory. What goes on a to-do list? Like everything that you have to do, right? They like, you know, like I got to pick up the dry cleaning. I got to, you know, pick up the kids. I don't know, like whatever you forget about, right? Like, you know, and then, and then in there, I've got to do follow-ups and I've got to do calls and I've got to do this for my business. And then, oh yeah, like I got to, you know, I got to set up this appointment or do this, right? And you have this huge long list. Then you check off a few things. I know people like doing the check boxes, you know, that kind of thing. But then you have this whole list of things that didn't get done, right? And what does that do? It chips away at your self-esteem because you because human beings go to the point of looking at what didn't get done versus celebrating what did get done, right? So if you have a, what I call a success list, a success list is really based on the, th oh, I, I see Deborah likes that. <laughs> see, I, I, I told you there was a solution. It wasn't like just eliminate your to-do list, a success list. And what goes on your success list? So, okay, for me, like I use myself as an example, I'm producing this television show. I'm like, I've got all this stuff that goes around there. So every activity that I do, I ask myself, is this taking me towards television production? or is it taking me away from television production? And with that sim simple question, everything that you're doing, you're gonna know what goes on to your success list. And the success list is short. So when you check off what you did get done, like you can just crumple up that paper and throw it away, right? And like, if you really are having a hard time getting away from the to-do list, do the same thing, put three or four things on there. Like you don't wanna forget about picking up the dry cleaning, but you know what, you can put that in your calendar. Like maybe you have a section where it's an hour of errands. All right, then put everything on that would normally go on a to-do list in that errand block, right? Because otherwise like you just get bogged down with all this, this stuff. That's what it is, it's stuff. And then you look at your to-do list, right? And somebody gives you an opportunity to fly to New York for the day and you're like, no, I don't got time because I got all this stuff on my to-do list I got to get done. It's so much different than a success list. So really focus in on the idea of a success list and a couple of things. And then maybe like what's on your success list are the things that you can focus on in your 15 minute increments. You see how that all kind of works together? You know, but like, and if it's not, if it doesn't match up, it's okay. It's your life, but that's what I want you to remember. It's your life and how are you living it? Like, how do you want, you know, to be like, you know, I mean, Colleen talked about it. Like, you know, when you're on your deathbed, like, are you like excited about like everything that you accomplished in life? Or are you sitting there regretting? Oh my gosh, I sh nobody like cares about the material stuff. They, they're like, oh, I wish I had spent more time with family. I wish I had spent more time with friends. I wish I had gone on that trip. You know, whatever it is, don't leave this life with all of those regrets. Just really find what speaks to you, what speaks to your, your passion. And even if you just incorporate a little bit more yeses every single day, You'll go to bed at night so fulfilled.
Nice, Julie. Wasn't that awesome, you guys? Come on. Who feels empowered? I'm like, <laughs> who feels empowered? I do. Okay. Uh, I just dropped her Calendly link in there. Julie, do you want to tell everyone what that is? And yes. I'm yes. open it so, up for anyone who's like freaking out right now and has a question. Right. So I'm an adventure and breakthrough coach. And so like, I really want to help you take a look at like, what is it? Like, where, where are the stopping blocks? What are block? What's blocking you? Cause you know, when you're in it, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. And like, I am very, very visionary, very creative, very like, I see the big picture and I'm also very intuitive. So like things will start to come out of me, like, and you'll be looking at me like, well, where the hell is that coming from? I'm like, you know, but it's something that you usually need to hear. So the normally it would be um, I set up the link so you don't have to worry about a code or anything. And normally it would be 597 to be 90 minutes with me. I'm dropping it to 297 for 90 minutes of like, let's, you know, like, let's just look at some things and you can bring anything to me. But I really want it to be about like adventure breakthrough, like, let's figure out how you can like Jackie, you know, I know you were looking at me like I was crazy, but like, let's just look at some things, you know, and just, you know, figure out what we can do together to, you know, really help you to create a life more by design rather than default. I love that. And um, thanks for sharing your emails. That way Julie can send the full tips of uh, how to stop waiting and start living. And if you want to unmute yourself, we have a couple minutes. Anyone who wants to ask a question or have like a holy crap moment, that's totally okay too. What are you going to do? What one thing are you going to change? Let me just ask each one of you, what one thing are you going to do to change uh, the way you're living today so you can really feel like you're living in the moment? What one thing are you going to change? I'm throwing this away. Can everybody see how yes. I'm organized? Woo! Burn totally it, throwing Burn it out. It. The, thank you. And Burn also, it. you know what else? I'm going to have an adventure mindset. Somebody mm. told me yesterday, I have a sense of adventure. I think that's different than an adventure mindset. So I'm going to now, starting right now at, hang on, 355 St. Louis time, I'm going to have um, an adventure mindset. Thank you. I, I love, love it. That. So great. Who else? Jay Reed. I'm creating that success list as soon as we get done because you know what? I've always thought, why in the hell do I make all these lists and I don't get it all done? What the heck? What is the point? You know, I'm just like, ah. Oh. And now, because I just moved, I have a new beautiful life by myself. Oh my gosh. Why not? A success list? Thank you. You freaking rock, girl. No joke. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Thanks. I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't wait to write my new story, you know? <laughs> You're writing it already. Yes. You already like started, you know, like you've had a lot of amazing Sunday. Days. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. ladies. And thanks for cheering me on. I'll keep you, you got in tune. it. Jackie, <laughs> did you want to ask a question or say something? Well, I just was thinking that. Oh, you've got to get new internet, Jackie, to start. Because I know. 24 hours of yes would be really kind of fun, actually. 24 hours. Oh, of no, yes. really? Yes. Really? You can't you hear it. me now? We, we finally yes, got 24 it. hours of yes. Oh okay, God. that that and like the, if, if the 15 minutes, the 15 yes. minutes is good. And if you're really married good. and you tell your spouse it's 24 yeah. hours of yes, like, I don't know. That's like, where I'm gonna, I don't know. Like, I don't know where that might go, but you know, I already yeah. know where it's, it's worth a try. It's worth a try. Yeah. I already know. <laughs> Who else? Anyone else? Anyone else want to join this party we got going on? It. Come on, yeah, Debbie, get gonna, up here. I'm going to do the 15 minutes for sure because yeah. I keep telling myself that all the ideas in my head for my second book, titled Surrendering to Magic, by the way, coming out soon, when I write <laughs> it, that I never get <laughs> to it. So the 15 minutes every morning to just be with just the writing of my book. <laughs> Bring it Thank us you on. so much. Yeah, Welcome. it's delicious. Yes, I love the name of your book. Yeah, like I mean, so just surrender. You know, I it just it's awesome. Okay, yeah. Renee then Vicky. Yeah. So first of all, Julie, fabulous presentation. Thank you for that. And you said something which is a really good thing. I thought about you know I have we all set our phone alarms, 
But what about our timer in the kitchen? I, you know, you can't, I put it, I literally have moved my phone away from my computer, but I find myself, I see that my peripheral vision is lighting up. So what is it? What is it? What is it? And I'm like, then you're not getting something else done because you're now distracting from what you're focusing on because now you've lost your focus. But if you have your, you know, your kitchen alarm set, then it's completely different. I do have one, so I could do that and just put that timer on. And this way I'm not being distracted. That was a really good tip. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. Vicki, unmute yourself. Come on, girl, join the party. I appreciate that. I really love the idea. I'm also the success list. Yes, but I do. I don't know if I'll give up my to do this, but it's about celebrating what I got accomplished mm. rather than what's next. And that's where I go to. So I get something done. And it's what's next rather than pausing for a moment and going, wow, that was awesome. You, look what you did. <laughs> and I love that yes. celebrating part of it. Yeah. I do more of that. So awesome. You guys today was so fun. Why? Because Julie Jones was here. That's why it was fun. And now you guys know why I keep her in my circle, why I hang out with her uh, all the time, because she brings so much adventure to my life and challenges me in an area that I'm not, you know, very open to or haven't been in the past. So surround yourself with the people that are going to pull you outside of your comfort zone. Ladies, today was fun. Today was so fun. So I hope you guys will register and come to next week. I don't even know what next week is. Let me just see real quick and I'll it's, tell uh, you. I, I'm hosting it because you won't be here. So it's um, with Lori oh. Osborne. Lori Osborne. Oh, Lori Osborne. That's right. Oh, you definitely want to come. So she's going to be talking about SEO for your website. She is like a website guru. You definitely want to register for next Thursday. She gives a lot away and she is amazing. So come to next Thursday for sure. You all need more traffic to your website. I'm just going to say everyone needs more traffic and she's going to teach you how to do that. So awesome, Julie. Thank you for hosting that for uh, me. Thank that you so much for coming today, ladies. Thank you All for right, saying you yes. Yes. <laughs> saying yes. All right, ladies. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye.